I would like to ask who among us will genuinely feel diminished? Thank you. Don't go away. Don't go away. Mr. Berlinski, I, I do want to commend you for the rich description of biological uh, systems and species in your commentary article. You claim that there are some species that uh, have what you at one point referred to as weird characteristics that are nearly unique. For example, only a few plants eat insects or carnivorous. Mm. Why aren't all of them? You also ask, if evolution is true, quote, then why are women, but not cats, born without the sleek tails that would make them even more alluring than they already are? <laughs> well, now, aside from aesthetics, you know, I saw the Catwoman Batman film, too. But aside from that, why? You, you don't seem to understand that different ecological environments in the distant past, as well as today, produce different adaptations. Why is that so strange to you? You're right, I don't understand it. you would find it. it as a failure of evolution. You're right, I don't understand it. You, it you don't no understand that different ecological spaces require different adaptability. That no. the same kind, you don't. No. Well, it seems fairly easy to figure out that if you're living in a desert, that is the difficulty finding with the water would be more it's important. It's always easy to persuade yourself that you've understood something when you haven't understood a thing. The issue before us is not whether retroactively we can explain an adaptation, but whether we can draw that adaptation from general principles. This is what Darwinian theory cannot do. And this is the, this is the requirement of normal science. Well, I if think I'm doing astrophysics, I have a dynamical theory. I can simulate yes. the evolution of the universe, and I know where the theory agrees with the data and where it does not. I cannot do that in biology. Well, then I think happens, with a happens, simple happens, sentence you could. Random selections which make a species, a species more likely to survive, are beneficial. That's a very simple idea, sure. and it explains why, in fact, some species survive and others do not. I mean, adaptive differential reproduction is the definition of natural Case selection. Sera, sera. Why is this what a What will happen will happen. That, what is this that could not be the locus in which you repose your trust. What will happen will happen. Big deal. No, no, no. That's, that's not. not a no, adaptive differential reproduction is not what will happen. That's just a large well, Latinate well, construction. Uh, uh, explain, Let me ask another question. Uh, ex why don't you explain what that term means? Well, it, I don't know. It may just. It may not necessarily enlighten our listeners, actually, because right. it is technical. But that's the whole point. It's not technical. I mean, it's just means what survives, survives. One, one, of the reasons, one of the reasons why people like me who deal with the creation evolution issue all the time get very frustrated dealing with, say, Institute for Creation Research people and so forth is because they are constantly saying X didn't <coughs> happen. And then it takes a great deal longer to explain why X did happen, gaps in the fossil record or whatever. Let me ask you a question about your commentary article. Okay. The major, you said in your commentary article, page 20, the major transitional sequences in the fossil record are incomplete. Yes, they are. And you cited as your reference uh, Romer's hot off the press 1966 article. No, now, but... are you Romer? Romer is a, is a very great man and very knowledgeable. Yeah. 1966 is not exactly cutting edge paleontology. Right. Are let's you turn, familiar, let sir? No, let's turn to Carol. No, no, no. Let's, uh, let's, let, you know, are you familiar with the research that's been done in the last 31 years? Mm -hmm. I can't imagine that because you would realize that the major argument going on among paleontologists dealing with the reptile mammal transition is where the hell do you draw the line? These things grade insensibly uh, is, is into each other, and they have, they have no ability to say, these guys are mammals, these guys are reptiles, because they roll into each yes, other. Yes, I agree with the tail end of your question. Uh, late, late reptilian transition to mammal is well documented in the record, although nowhere near as well as Darwinian theory requires. That's a big distinction. But if you dislike the citation to Roma, who's a great figure in paleontology, let's look at Carroll's new book on chordate paleontology, hot off the presses, page four, left side of the page, Evolution heading, third paragraph, second sentence, what does he say? He says, the evidence shows that major transitions are missing from the fossil record, just as Eldritch, Gould, and in Stanley In reference claimed. to the chordates. Now, the fact that we Th don't that's have the all the case. information. That's the strongest case. The fact case. that we don't have all the information. No, I was talking about, about the, the reptile mammal transition. Chordates, chordates are, are very, very much the earlier. The problem of your argument chordates. is the chordates. No. We, chord uh, chordates. Vertebrates, that's us. Oh. No, we're, chordates we're, are we're the all chordates here, Mike. Uh, <laughs> if, you turn, if you turn to the insects, the situation is catastrophic. There is no fossil document. Documentation. None uh, whatsoever. What?
for the insects. There's very good fossil documentation very poor. for the Butterfly relationship Lepidoptera. Between, between ants and, and wasps. There's excellent uh, yes, transition. Yes, the lateral transition, oh, but, we but won't count them. Lepidoptera, mis- the Lepidoptera spiders, for. major insects group, they simply yeah. appear. Mr. Berlinski, you're never going to be satisfied. Every time you right. find 16 new things, new fossils, to fill in the so-called fossil record that was missing, you just say find 16 more. So my question to no, you no. is how many 16 to the what power do we have to discover I'll before tell you accept exactly. this is true? Here's what Darwinian theory rigorously requires. For every significant, every significant morphological or physiological feature in a modern species, we should have a panoply of intermediate forms that no, explains that's... how they arise. We don't have them <laughs> for some that good reasons, but we have right. nothing like an explanation the, for the, the gaps that exist. The fog is rolling in again. Fog I'm telling you, the species <laughs> aren't there. I, we were I, talking, I first of all, about evolution, descent with modification. I, now we've shifted over to mechanisms of evolution. No, I haven't mentioned that. And mechanisms. we're out of time. Thank you very much, Mr. Berlinski. Okay. <laughs> Professor Miller, it's your chance to make an opening statement with more props. Can't live without them. Um, I, I can't tell you how much I enjoyed uh, Dr. Berlinski's statement because he focused in on one of the major deficiencies of the four people on the other side of the table who argue against evolution. And that major theoretical deficiency is they have no explanation for natural history. And to me, as an experimental biologist, I am frustrated if I do not see a theoretical framework into which the past can be explained. We know something about the past, and there are facts about the fossil record, and I'll tell you in a very general way one of those facts, and that is that fossils show a succession of types over time. Now, we know the other side advocates intelligent design as a primary characteristic of the fossil record. Let's explore the primary scientific characteristic of intelligent design when it is squared with the fossil record. The fossil record, and I can give you specific examples, is characterized best by a sequences of appearances and disappearances. Now think what that means. What that means is that the characteristic that best describes the intelligent designer who would have designed this fossil record is incompetence. Because everything the intelligent designer designed, with about 1% exceptions, has immediately become extinct. Intelligent design has no explanation for the successive character of the fossil record, Evolution has a perfect explanation, and that is the appearance of new forms and the extinction of others. And if you see a scheme for the natural history of intelligent design presented by the other side tonight, you should treasure it because they've never announced one before. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Don't go away. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. 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 Ken, in, in my introductory mar- remarks, I showed a picture of Heckel's embryos, those little drawings of embryos looking the same and gradually turning into different in, indeed forms. Indeed you did, and I'm going to give you a hand because the picture that you have right here, I have brought an enlarged copy for just to help you out. Okay, thanks very much. Uh, any, <laughs> my, a, anything, anything I can do. And, and you notice that it says in uh, Science Magazine of a couple months ago, Heckel's embryos, broad rediscovered. Absolutely. And which it says, not only did Heckel add or omit features, Richardson and his colleagues report, but he also fudged the scale. And the uh, author of the report says, it looks like it's turning out to be one of the most famous fakes in biology. Now, in your very good biology textbook for high school, uh, it reproduces Heckel's drawings. And it uses them in the section of how we know evolution occurred. And uh, it points to them as saying that uh, embryos should be preserved in the early stages. Now, my question embryos is... Embryos should be preserved in the early stages? Well, e- embryos uh, conserved in the early stages. Okay, I think we should all be preserved in our early stages. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my question is this. Uh, you know, you were victimized by Heckel's fraud, as Indeed. did everybody, was everybody else. Uh, but should your, do you think your, should, your publisher should notify school districts to have them uh, tell teachers to point this mistake or this fraudulent activity out to to students? Oh, absolutely, and and I would do better than that. Uh, First of all, the letters to my publisher changing these figures are already off. And secondly, what I have done for the textbook, and and I appreciate the commercial for this, and I'd be glad to give the URL for those of you who are interested, (laughs) is Joe Levine and I, my co-author, have set up an Internet website in which we keep scientific updates to our textbook. And this is something which will go up in the website in a matter of days as a scientific update. I think it's very significant, and I appreciate your support on this. That's great. I just have one more question, if, if I could squeeze I, maybe, it in. Maybe we'll get back to you, Mr. Uh, Berlinski. Uh, 
I'm oh, sorry. Professor, so Professor Johnson. It's next. Uh, um, uh, in my, my discussion with uh, Eugenie, we talked about the mechanism as uh, the, the uh, all-important thing.